Welcome back to another video. This one is gonna be a bit of a spring clean video. Today is the 1st of April. I thought I would just like clean out home with you today. I started on a load of washing. I'm washing the bed sheets currently. I thought I would answer a few questions because I asked in my last video for some questions some people had wanted me to do a bit of a Q&A. So I thought what a better time than just while I'm in the house cleaning. And today's the day that I'm finally gonna clear up my wardrobes. I'm gonna like properly clean everything pretty much. I'm going to show you what I'm having for dinner, which I've not even thought about yet. I might have to go out to the shop actually. And yeah, this is the state of the place. It's not looking too bad, but it's just more like some dishes that I need to get done. The clock is finally fixed, by the way. Some people, I didn't want to mention it too much in my videos in case everyone's like, yeah, we know, shut up. But this clock has been broken for a while and it's be, it was stuck on quarter to 11 for a long time. But bin bags behind there that are full and need to go out to the bin. I'm gonna clean the bathroom and I'm just gonna do like a proper 1st of April spring clean. It was really bright sun this morning. I had the patio doors open. I was like, yay, it's first day of spring. And then now it's turned to rain. I don't know if you can even see that. I have Fake of Fortune on in the background. If you've never seen that show, you might be quite similar to me. I'm really curious about like funny antique things and like art. Basically this show is all about people who found things at cart boot car boot sales or like their old grannies passed them down this that and the other i just watched one that was a little statue and it was like this little you wouldn't even think it was anything it was like a little warrior statue that had no arms and it was by the sculpture sculptor from the 60s i think and her sculpt sculpts her sculptures have been selling for like 100 grand lately and this lady found one i think at a car boot sale. They do like tests, like metal tests to see what era it's from. And they do all of these professional researchy bits to figure out whether it's fake or the real thing. That little soldier one, spoiler if you're gonna watch it, it's from series 11 of the show, is real. And the lady's now got like a little sculpture that she paid 90 quid for, and it's now worth 60 grand, which is incredible. So it's really good show. And I, it's just nice to have on in the background. There's 11 series of it as well. And it's all just different things. I wanted to quickly show you a foundation that I picked up the other day. Um, I also did a bit of a Space NK order last night, which I've stocked up on a few bits that I really needed, but I'll show you all of that when it arrives during the week at some point. I got this Clarins Skin Illusion Foundation at King's Cross the other day. Um, well, it's St. Pancras technically, but same thing and it's literally the best foundation i've ever used i would really highly recommend i had a few comments in my videos lately being like well i had one in particular that was like your makeup looks yellow like is this what you're going for or is it and i thought yeah do you know what to be fair my foundation is probably a couple of shades too dark for my skin and i thought let me go and get shade matched properly i think someone at work mentioned this to me a while ago but it's got a very similar consistency to the chanel aqua fresh you know the like really watery like foundations um and it's really good it's really lightweight you can literally barely detect it i mean i've got it on right now you could be the judge if you're in the market then check it out anyway i'm gonna go now and i'm gonna put cam the camera on and film myself just doing my household chores and then i'm gonna answer some questions as part of my q a in a little while interlude from your little montage you've been watching me doing the clear out i'm actually out of breath i'm gonna turn this dehumidifier off 
I just pulled everything out of my wardrobe and this is not a joke. <laughs> look at this. I've got Sophie and Chinsey on in the background while I do this, but look at all this stuff. I have a mix of like summer wedding guest bags here, which I, I actually love that bag. I think it's from Mango. I have some mittens from winter, all sorts of random junk. And then I've also found like my old baseball cap from a couple of summers ago, which I loved. My really nice PJs, some more little evening bags. All of this stuff is clean, by the way. I obviously am not that far back. That I'm going to put dirty stuff away in a wardrobe. But anyway, this is like all my clothes that I own, all my summer stuff, all my winter stuff. Obviously, I have the drawers over here. Look at the state of this place. This is actually awful. I need to deal with the shoes as well, but I will do that at the end, I think. I might have to go into my drawers as well. Just that middle drawer has got the bottom drawer. This is all jumpers and knitwear, which is fine. Like I know everything that's in there. I know where to find everything. This one is just ridiculous. This one's like a mix of underwear, sports stuff, like old pajama tops, pairs of jeans, like just the most random things. I've also got like four different sizes of the same jeans of Levi's where my weight fluctuated so much between like COVID and like pre-COVID, during COVID, after COVID, that I definitely need to just like put on Vinted or chuck away, like for example, these little Levi's here, 27 waist. I'm definitely not 27 waist anymore. So they're gonna go in a Vinted parcel, parcel. They're gonna go on Vinted for someone to buy. And I will chat to you. I'll let you see this, but I'm gonna speed it up because it's quite boring, I think, to talk through someone else's old, creased clothes um, but I will prop you up here and you can have this lovely view. I think I'm pretty much finished for the day. I'm just gonna show you the final look of the bedroom. The chest of drawers are all clear. And then if I just show you the bed, I changed, washed and dried the bed covers, put them back on, moved the bed out of the way, and then like dusted it all behind there. I put a tent in the garden that Matt had from some festival that he went to that was literally a bit just like covered in dust. And I just decided I'll just put it in the garden. So let's see how that goes down when he's back. So. What I've done is I put up here some knitwear. This is a really cool cardigan from Hush that I don't wear enough. And I thought if it's up there, I'll probably be more likely to wear it. And I've got a couple of baseball caps. Over here, I've got some like summer vest tops and like more summer pieces. This is like a satin navy jumpsuit that I love. I wore it so much last summer. Again, these are like summer shorts. This is all my workout stuff. So these are all leggings. My sports bras and stuff are up here. And here, pajamas. And then lots of clothes here. <laughs> Basically coats on this side and like jumpers. So I'll show you a few of my like favorites. I've gotten really into bash lately. Um, I got this little quilted jacket towards the end of the summer last year. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to wear it more in spring. This blazer is from Arquette, it's linen. I love that, I get so much wear out of it. This jacket that you guys have seen, the suede brown one. This is from Cause, this is like a skirt and top set that I I'm obsessed with but you just kind of need like the right occasion to wear it because it looks very Vivian Westwood-esque and it looks really cool with like chunky black boots and tights. This is a Topshop jacket that I got in Vinted and then a little, what's that called? Waistcoat. This is my Rixo lovely shirt that I don't really wear often enough. Like these need ironed. I just thought, let, like, look at this, this is Ganny but this needs ironed desperately. And I haven't gotten around to the shoes because that was enough for one day. I am absolutely exhausted, to be honest, after doing that. It's like 5 p.m. I've also put on another load of washing and that's all drying here. We actually have a cute fox in the garden. Let me just show you him. He's having a little sleep. It was really sunny earlier and he was literally just following the sun around the garden, like in the, wherever the sun would move, he would move around and just like, 
get comfy. It's a little bit later now. The sun is still shining. It's actually such a nice day outside again. The weather this week has been mental. I've decided what I'm gonna have for dinner. I found some uh, Sainsbury's King Prawns in the freezer. These are always so good to keep in the freezer because you can just like make such a simple pasta. King Prawns. I also find a nice linguine that me and Matt got in a little farm shop recently. And I thought I'll have my King Prawn garlic, chili, I've got some cherry tomatoes, some shallots and then like different herbs. And I thought whilst I am cooking, not cooking, whilst I'm chopping, I would answer some of the questions from the Q&A that you got, well, not from the Q&A. I would answer some questions that you guys left me on my last video. I had a lot of lovely comments and the questions are kind of like in between them all. So it might take me a minute to find some. And I also made myself a nice little gin and tonic just to end the bank holiday weekend because I'm starting to get the Sunday scaries a little bit, <laughs> even though it's Monday. It's only a four day week, which is gonna be so good. So one of the first questions that I was asked was about um, outfit combinations and what I wear to the office. So I would say that to the office, because I'm in there four days a week, I know I go on about that all the time. Always wear the same thing on the bottom, just because it takes any decision making out of it and makes the mornings a little bit easier. So I always wear a pair of black trousers and then I just rotate different tops. So one of my favorite outfits to wear is um, m and do these like crew neck, long sleeve, very fitted, but kind of very slightly ribbed uh, jumpers. And I just wear a navy, I have a navy one, I have like a camel color one. So I wear those a lot. Um, I wear often this, this is literally drying for tomorrow for me to wear to work tomorrow. This blouse from from m and again, like long sleeves. I try and go for like long sleeve things in the office because it's air conditioned and I think it's just a little bit more professional than wearing um, like having my arms and stuff out. Not that that's unprofessional, but it's just my personal preference, I mean. I tend to go for stuff like that and then I'll just rotate them and like you only really need probably like five or six different tops and then you kind of just wash them and you know rotate as you go but that is one tip that I would always say is just find a pair of really good trousers that you love and then just rotate different tops with them and I'm going to do like a proper dedicated video on outfits and just kind of show you what I wear in a week so hopefully that will also help a little bit also for shoes sorry one more thing about that I always wear a pair of pop socks which are basically like tights but they just go up to like just below the knee with a pair of ballet pumps. And it just, cause I, I like to wear flats, obviously I'm quite tall. And you can buy these packs of pop socks. I actually got mine on Amazon. You obviously lose them because they get lost in the washing machine or wherever the hell they end up. But yeah, you just buy loads of them and they're really handy. Okay, so the next question says, would love to hear more about your day job in terms of what you do and how stressful you find it working as an accountant, what your company culture is like. A lot of accountants slash finance professionals are struggling at the minute with the general workload and poor culture. Would love to know how you switch off if you do and separate your work life from the day to day. So I feel really lucky. My company is, it has a really good culture. Uh, the people often tend to have been at the company for like literally 20 years. Like a lot of people have been there for a really long time. I've been there for a relatively long time in the grand scheme of things. Like a lot of people in finance move around quite a lot. I think that's because of the things that um, that person mentioned in the comment and um, the culture not being good or like just extremely long hours and things like that. We do, we are expected to work like a lot during busy periods. So like for me, our busy periods are around year end and half year and then like reporting periods and things like that. And we do work long hours, but I think it's just so much easier these days with being able to work from home and take your work laptop home. Um, so there's a, a expectation like the, the work still needs to get done, but you can just do it from home and in the evenings, you know, you're not working in the office till 10, 11 o'clock at night. You just come home and then log back on and, you know, have dinner with your family and then, you know, keep doing work if you need to. But the culture is really good. The people are so lovely. Like, I think that's why people have stayed there for so long is because, yeah, people are so nice. Like, I genuinely like everyone that I work with in my team. And I don't think that's representative of a lot of places in finance though especially in London I think that can be quite a if you work in like audit or kind of one of those fields I think they work really really long hours and then how do I switch off to be honest I really struggled over the past few years with hobbies like I didn't really have any hobbies like I would just enjoy you know going out to a pub like try I've always been a bit of a foodie so I've loved trying new restaurants on the weekends and like 
exploring London, going to different markets and bits like that. But I'd say that like starting this YouTube channel has given me such a different like kind of hobby. I, I actually did YouTube about 10 years ago. Um, I was making videos when I was still living at home with my family. Um, I think I was just, oh yeah, I was still at uni. I absolutely loved it back then, but I just find it so cringe. And I was like, oh my God, like people are gonna find my channel and stuff. And anyway, I just stopped it. And I really, really regret stopping it. Cause it just, I was so happy when I was doing it. And I feel like that again. So I feel like YouTube has been such a good, like release for me and like really helps me with the creativity side of things. Cause obviously my job day to day is like not very creative. I'm an accountant, it's like very following rules and you know, a lot of processes and things. And yeah, I think that that is one way that I switch off is making videos, chatting to you guys and like just editing videos. And I just really enjoy it. It just gives me like a nice creative side to my day to day. And other than that, yeah, like still love going to restaurants, still love exploring London, seeing my family, seeing friends, like going away for a weekend. I also love in terms of like where we live, it's quite easy to go to like the seaside for the day, like go down to Brighton or go to like, went on a trip to Margate. I actually did a vlog. I'll link the vlog if you want to go and watch that. That was one of my like really early vlogs that I made. Yeah, and, and we go to spin. I do love a spin class. That also helps me switch off. Okay, so another question that I got was about Scotland. Like what brought me to London? Do I miss Scotland? I do miss Scotland. I love it. I think I would love to live in Edinburgh. I did live in Edinburgh for a while when I was at university and it's just such a gorgeous city. I would like, if, you, if you're not being for a weekend in Edinburgh, I would say it's like definitely up there. Like you should 100% do it, especially if you can get tickets for the Fringe Festival. So on every summer, I think it's like end of July and then all of August, I think. Look it up, free book tickets, obviously. It's just that tiny bit too small, I think, for me. Um, I One thing I do love about living down here is like, the choice, like you can go every day of the week and try a new restaurant. In Edinburgh, you can walk everywhere. It's like a much smaller vibe. It'd be a, an amazing city to bring up kids. It's so nice for a weekend break. But I think for me, like I've lived there, I lived there throughout uni and that was kind of that phase of life for me. Like I've done that now and I'm kind of, yeah, it, it's, it's not for me right now, but I mean, never say never. I would love to go and move back there, but for me right now probably it's not going to happen um my sister does still live there and i love going to visit her and she's got an amazing flat in stockbridge which is just gorgeous there's so many gorgeous old buildings there as well where you can get like an amazing flat for relatively reasonable prices compared to to down here um as for like why i moved down here it was it was for work it was more for the kind of chance of i moved down here with a friend actually and it was more for the chance of like just trying something different i was living in edinburgh post uni um and yeah i just i kind of fancied a change and i wasn't really sure what to do i was working at HSBC actually for a while and loved it. The people were really lovely again, like another great company that I really enjoyed working for. And I just was kind of like ready for something different. Um, one of my friends was moving down here and she was like, why don't you come? And then I started looking for a job. I found a job um, and yeah. And then I was in that company for a couple of years, made some really, really good friends and just, it was just such, it was like the right time to have a change in my twenties. I think I was, how long have I been here? I've been here since 2016. So I was quite a bit younger and it was just nice to like go a bit wild in London and, you know, go out drinking, try different restaurants, bars, like just live a bit of a carefree life and explore a new city where you obviously still speak the language and, you know, it's like familiar, but it's not, it's like an adventure sort of thing. So, so that's why I moved to London basically. And I don't regret it at all. I've been here for eight years now and yeah, it's been a long time, but it's gone so fast and it's been literally the best decision I could have made. So I'm really glad to have come down. So another question that I got was from a lovely girl who left me a really nice comment and it was about books. She said, my question for you is, are you a reader and what type of books do you like to read? So I would say I'm definitely a reader. I love nothing more than reading a really good book that I'm like obsessed with and can't put down. I kind of go through spells with it where I'm kind of, if if a book isn't like keeping my attention and if I'm not like fully engrossed in it, I really struggle. I read Colleen Hoover's uh, book Verity, which I really, really enjoyed, but none of her other kind of books sing to me that much. Like I know a lot of people are really into the 
it ends with us and it begins with us series which i think i will at some point read but other than like i'm not really into the kind of romance novels um but i loved verity a bit of a thriller like page turner i thought that was a really good book i'm just looking over here to see which books i have oh i absolutely loved um where the crawdads sing i did not enjoy the movie at all but i loved that book i thought that was an incredible book um I loved All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr, which is actually been made into, uh, I'm trying to think which channel it's on. I think it's on Amazon Prime or, I think it's Amazon Prime, be made into an Amazon Prime series or it's Netflix and incredible. Like one of the best books I've read and loved the TV series as well or the, the movie or whatever it was. I'm saying that I don't love like a romance novel, but um, I like I like a little bit more grit to a kind of romance novel if I'm going to read a romance novel it's got to kind of have like some underlying themes or like a good story or you know like it's got to, got to really like keep me occupied it can't just be like all romance um, An American Marriage that was an amazing book I loved that it was basically a horrendous story about well it's not a horrendous story it's just a really sad story where um, it's set in like the 1950s I think and it follows the lives of a young black couple who are on their honeymoon, I think, and they're staying in a motel in America and the husband goes to the ice machine and he gets some ice from the ice machine and on his way he speaks to a white woman and then later on this woman tragically gets raped but she reports it as being him and he goes to prison. This is not really a spoiler, I think this is on the blurb of the book, but he goes to prison for, I think, like something crazy like 50 years or something and oh no it's not 50 years I think it's like 20 years and it's about how his marriage with his wife works she believes him and she well no she knows it wasn't him actually because he actually came back to the room and he was only at the ice machine for like five minutes they write letters back and forth to each other over the time that he's in prison and it just follows their relationship basically going through that horrendous thing that's happened to both of them and it's such a good book. I would really highly recommend that one, actually. There's nothing else that stands out to me right now, but I will write in the comments down below if, I, if anything else springs to mind. Someone else asked me, what is your job and what did you study? So I'm an accountant. I, I'm not like doing audit or anything like that. I'm in-house accounting. So I'm technically a financial controller, which is a very interesting job. Um, it's basically just doing a lot of checks to make sure that um, any, Thing that has gone on throughout the month has been accounted for properly and um, making sure that the way trades have been booked or things like that have been carried out correctly and yeah I check and make sure all of it has been and then close off the month end we do a lot of quarterly reporting yearly reporting um, and all of that fun stuff and what did I study I studied economics and business law at Harriet Watt University in Edinburgh and that's where I was in Edinburgh for four years so that was good. I, that was a really fun time. I'm not someone that I would say like absolutely adore uni. I know a lot of people who are like, uni was the best years of my life, but I wouldn't say that for me. I would say these are the best years of my life. I'm literally loving this last decade, this last decade. I'm loving this past few years and looking forward to the next decade. So I had someone ask me about the dinners that I eat during the week. So obviously it's me and Matt that live together and I do most of the cooking, I would say. Uh, the kind of things that we eat for dinner would probably include this pasta dish or like some form some form some form of like variation on this so i will often do us a king prawn um cherry tomato like spicy chili garlic uh like a broth that i then put some beans of some sort into often cannellini beans which i love and then we'll dip in like some crusty bread with butter um We'll often have like a curry on a Friday night, but it'll be like a Waitrose or M&S curry just because it's cheaper. And to be honest, I think it tastes better and it's not greasy. We'll often have some sort of like breaded fish with cubed potatoes that I just make in the air fryer with either like beans or broccoli. We haven't for a few weeks, but we often will have like a piece of salmon that I'll like put soy or like soy and garlic or some sort of like mixture like that on top and bake in the oven and we'll have it with rice and then like I'll do some chili broccoli in the air fryer oh chicken pie I love making a chicken pie with just like the shop bought paste puff pastry um 
and we'll have that with some like mash or some chips or some vegetables of some sort and that's pretty much it to be honest we went through a phase of always doing like nando style chicken where we do like chicken thigh um in like a nando sauce and then bake it in the oven and have that with like rice and broccoli just similar to what we would do with the salmon but just like a nando's version but i got quite ill at christmas and i think it was just like a little bug that i picked up but i thought it was from chicken thigh and i've kind of gone off chicken thigh ever since so we haven't really been having that another lovely subscriber left me a bunch of questions so they said what kind of music do i listen to i'm such an eclectic music taste person like i literally listen to anything i love a bit of god i'm having a mind blank right now i'm like what do i love i love a bit of uh future islands i don't know if you guys have heard of future islands love future islands i um, went to see them in brighton actually I love Palace. I think their music's really good. Um, I quite like Big Thief. Um, that's kind of more slow and calm music. I'm very, yeah, I like things that are slow and calm. I'm not like a Swifty or I'm not really into like uh, Harry Styles or any of that sort of stuff, unfortunately. I mean, I, I like it. I appreciate it. I know why people do enjoy it, but I won't be listening to it on the tube by any means. Um, what else do I like? I'm trying to think of like playlists that I've made recently. I kind of just go with the Spotify algorithm, if I'm honest, and just kind of listen to whatever new things that they show me on playlists and then add things playlists. I also love Lizzie Hadfield's playlist at her Discover Weekly. I think she made it public. I am literally subscribed to that and I listen to her Discover Weekly every week. Um, I think hers is really, really good. She's got great taste in music. How do you manage a household job, partnership, family, friends, and time for yourself? I don't really. I feel like I'm always juggling something and something's not quite being done. Like, I would say... I'm just going to chop a chilli. I would say that recently the thing that has suffered is my exercise and my health. Like, I've not, not that my health's bad. I just mean I haven't really been taking care of my exercise and, like, my health, really. Um, like looking after myself and making healthy meals I think I've just kind of let that slip a little bit but I think that's just part of life and it's just like one of those things where everyone's trying to juggle and nobody can successfully do it all I don't think I think there's always something that'll juggle that'll like kind of be dropped but it's just about like rotating things I guess like obviously I've I was saying about my spin like I've not really been good at going to spin lately but like now I'm just prioritizing making sure that I do go to it because it's been a few weeks and I don't want to like lose all my energy and stamina when it comes to like being able to stay on the beat in a spin class so I think you just then something else will kind of slip away for a little bit and it's just like part of it I, I don't have a secret unfortunately but let me know if anybody has any tips for stuff like that I think that's it really I think those are all the questions that I can see um, I'm kind of going through them. If you do have anything or I haven't answered, then please let me know and obviously I will answer them. Um, I've chopped all of these ingredients up now and I think I'm just going to fry off the prawns and then... No, sorry. I'm going to fry the onion. I'm going to add the prawns. I'll add the garlic, the chilli, the cherry tomatoes and then add a big glug of olive oil when I mix it all in with the pasta. I'm actually going to put the pasta on before I do any of that cooking. I've already tried this, but I thought I'd quickly just show you on camera a little taste test. Um, it's really yummy. It's got loads of dill, loads of chilli. It's nice and garlicky. I always find recipes are never garlicky enough for me. So here goes. It's really good. I actually have a piece of naan bread in the oven that I'm going to have with it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that I answered all the questions. Please let me know if there's anything that I didn't touch on that you wanted me to chat about. Um, and yeah, I'm going to enjoy my dinner. I'm going to chill out tonight. I think I'm going to watch something. I don't know if Married at First Sight's on tonight. I'm really hoping that it is. 
and yeah, I'm just going to chill out <coughs> and enjoy the rest of my bank holiday weekend before I am in the office tomorrow. So I will chat to you guys in my next video. I think it will be Wednesday. Bye.